Good Saturday evening, folks. What's going on there? It is Earthmaster here checking in. On this Saturday night, October 24th, 2020, is the date 8.04 p.m. West Coast time out here in California. And the latest quake to strike the Earth out here is going to be a 5.4 over here around the Indonesia Islands area. Uh, pretty uh, new quake right there, at least the latest here on the Earthquake 3D globe. Uh, a lot of activity has calmed down over around the uh, western part of the Pacific Ring of Fire. Uh, and that has led to an uptick in activity out here around the Alaska area, also into parts of uh, uh, Canada, it looks like way up there, and also the west coast, showing quite a bit of earthquake activity on the uptick. And, uh, well, we can see that on a better scale here once we move over to the flat earth scale. Uh, let's see if I can get through this update again uh, without losing my voice. Just pretty uh, pretty dry out here. We got humidity values tomorrow uh, dipping down into the uh, middle single digits. I'm talking about 6% humidity. Uh, not good. Pretty bad for fires. <clears throat> so there's that 5.4 um, striking out there in the uh, area. Not a whole lot of activity, as you can see here on the map within this region. Some activity over here by China, uh, China and up here around uh, Baghdad, Iran, uh, and uh, Tehran. I mean, Te Tehran, I believe it is, uh, in that region. But not a whole lot uh, to speak of there. Can't say that uh, much here in the Alaska area. You can see quite a bit of earthquake activity uh, stretching up into uh, the inner part of Alaska there. Also some aftershock activity following last week's uh, large quake there, that 7.6 that struck in the region. And I expect earthquake activity to continue there for a while. Um, and who knows, we could potentially see a bigger quake. And then, uh, you know, the USGS is gonna state, uh, well, that just another aftershock or maybe all this stuff was four quakes. You never know. Anyway, um, still a lot of aftershock activity there within that region. And also over here uh, towards the Gulf of Alaska as well. Uh, once we go up here to Canada, there's a little tr um, double quake up there. A couple different uh, variations there in magnitude and depths of the earthquakes. And also a little bit of uh, separation there when it comes to the, uh, the distance, about five miles apart. Um, just up there, way up there in the cold, which is uh, sounds kind of fun right now. West Coast, here's all the activity taking place out there. We're seeing pretty uh, good increase in, in movement along the Pacific part of this plate boundary right here, the Pacific Plate. Last night, this was pretty, uh, eh, it was a little bit quieter than what we're seeing tonight. You can see about four earthquakes here within the last hour. The red circles there indicating the last hour of quakes there in the region and these are not uh, well these are somewhat micro quakes there around the region there at just uh, what's this the San Jacinto Fall area kind of uh, been active over the past few months here that looks like it's just off of the San Jacinto Fault uh, at least the main one there this looks like the uh, Hot Springs Fault area of the San Jacinto Fault Zone. And uh, a little bit of shaking going on out there around the greater Los Angeles area. Or within that region, I consider this whole area just one big giant concrete jungle. Cluster of quakes out here north of Corona. Pretty good, uh, pretty good little swarm starting out there. I have to keep an eye on this one. Uh, looks like 2.7 being the largest quake there in uh, in the area. Uh, but moving down south here, uh, just kind of sporadic and whatnot. No more swarming near the Salton Sea. That activity has calmed down uh, completely. There was a uh, uh, let's see here. There's a little bit bigger quake down here near the Baja California region, Gulf of California. 
4.7 striking out there in the uh, in that region. And I actually did see a little bit of uptick out here along the creeping section of the San Andreas Fault. You can see these uh, little small quakes popping off on this section here. So a little bit of movement. This is pretty typical for uh, the uh, creeping section to see these type of earthquakes here in this area. Uh, it's this region here to the south that uh, we don't want to see a whole bunch of activity on because that could obviously point to... Uh, uh, well, painting a, a big picture of a of the uh, big one down there on that large on that uh, on that lock section of the San Andreas Fault there. If I can spit out my words, past couple nights been crazy. I think the wind's getting to me and uh, lack of humidity in the air and uh, just no rain. You know how weather affects moods? Well, it's affecting my mood because there is no rain. We haven't had rain for many months. And it's getting old, I tell you what, it's getting really old. Idaho seen a little bit larger activity. Uh, some threes up there, or at least one 3.4 there on the, what's this, the Sawtooth Fault system, I believe, or, yeah, Sawtooth Fault, right at the northern end of it, right there where it ends. This one here uh, is capable of producing a, a pretty good sized earthquake, no mega quake, nothing like the San Andreas Fault, but. Uh, it could definitely see some some uh, larger magnitudes there and it looks like a little small follow-up quake there and uh, Yellowstone National Park was showing a little bit of uh, micro quaking going on no swarms yet just a little bit of a uh, you know a couple spitter spatters of small quakes here you can see these little spikes here on the seismograph station there within Yellowstone National Park kind of over towards the uh, northwestern side of the of the uh, park there other areas to the south and to the east all quiet some wind events and whatnot I know they had some snow up in Montana um, and I'm sure some of it stretched down into uh, Wyoming a big wind event is expected uh, well, at least here in our area I'm sure they'll bring some uh, some wind over to this area as well. But as uh, far as earthquake activity, uh, pretty quiet. That's the word in the uh, earthquake department tonight. Um, let's see here. I know last night I kind of got sidetracked and forgot to cover the rest of the globe. There's not a whole lot of earthquake, to, earthquake activity to talk about um, around the globe tonight. Hawaii is seeing a little bit of activity. I got a, quite a few notifications on my phone today um, of earthquakes popping off there around volcano. A pretty good swarm of activity right around the Kilauea Crater volcano. You got to watch this pretty closely. This is that hot spot of, uh, of uh, activity a couple years ago when we had all sorts of uh, lava and stuff coming up out of the ground. It was pretty, uh, really, really interesting. Got about 71 earthquakes here around in and around the crater of Kilauea Volcano. This cluster right here is something to watch and also uh, pay attention to these depths over here. Most of them are pretty shallow, uh, about four kilometers or so upwards. Uh, no deep movement here, so we could be seeing uh, some, uh, there's a four, four, uh, four kilometers below the surface there. You can see the magnitudes on these are they're not microquakes. A lot of these are above 2.5. Um, there's a 3.5 right there. I think they had a couple threes if I if, if I remember correctly throughout the day today. Uh, maybe not, but still, activity picking up. It's something to pay attention to. This is kind of. Uh, we start seeing this uptick a little bit more. It might be something to uh, to uh, really look into. Could see uh, some some movement down there, and I'm talking about uh, you know lava and underground activities going on. So we are watching that pretty closely. Um, let's see here what we got here. 
where's my volcano chart here real quick let me check that I haven't I haven't been to this page in a while most of the time I just use the uh, USGS site which I probably will uh, US let's go over here and check that real quick I'm sure the status is still the same uh, for Kilauea Volcano still looking looking green which is normal this activity that we've seen uh, you know on the uh, <clears throat> on the map there <clears throat> excuse me is just outside like I say just outside of that uh, that crater talks about a little bit of activity here uh, of course back in uh, 2018 that's when we had all that activity decades long continuous activity on the east rift zone ended and the summit lava lake drained following an intrusion into an eruption from Kilauea's lower east rift zone that was Kilauea's largest eruption in at least 200 years and was accompanied by the largest summit collapse for the same uh, for that same period pretty interesting year a lot of uh, a lot of uh, activity happened with this volcano back then <clears throat> threat potential very high even though right now uh, everything's in the green um, that could change drastically if if we see more um, signs of you know some movement and whatnot down below so keeping an eye on it Here's the latest from the USGS on that uh, information there. October 23rd, that was just yesterday. So this is basically the most uh, recent update here. Kilauea volcano is not erupting. A swarm or a small swarm of shallow. Talked about the depth there. Uh, seismic activity over the last 24 hours has occurred near the uh, this region. Fault system northwest of Kilauea summit. Uh, other Kilauea monitoring data streams remain stable and show no signs of increased activity. Um, let's see here. It talks about the earthquakes occurring in a cluster about one mile wide and one to three miles below the surface. The largest event in the sequence was a magnitude 3 that we mentioned. Clustering of shallow earthquakes in this region does not mean an eruption is imminent. Uh, HVO, which is the Hawaii Volcano Observatory, has recorded shallow earthquakes in this area for many decades across several eruptive cycles at both Kilauea and Mauna Loa. Other monitoring data streams for, for these uh, volcanoes include ground deformation, gas, and imagery. Show no signs of increased activity for now, folks. Um, HVO continues to closely monitor geologic changes. And, uh, of course, they will issue, you know, <laughs> when they need to. But it's definitely something to keep an eye on, that's for sure, out there in Hawaii. Uh, let's go to the trimmer department real quick. We'll check that out here. And, um, well, looks about, about the same, but same area, I, I should say, as last night. But less epicenters. We're looking at about half the epicenters that we've seen last night. So, um, this is definitely dying down. The trimmer's dying down. Uh, from the previous couple weeks of intense activity out there along the Cascadia subduction zone But for now we're looking uh, you know, it's slowing down, but that doesn't mean a uh, You know a, a big earthquake won't occur. It could occur whether there's a trimmer Movement going on or if there isn't it just all depends on when uh, When it wants to release its full potential today in earthquake history out here in the uh, Puebla I was going to say Pueblo, but that's a Puebla, Mexico. 1980, uh, 6.4 earthquake occurred down there. Uh, left quite a few folks there homeless and extensive damage in central Mexico. Felt throughout central and southern Mexico and uh, in Guatemala. Anyway, folks, um, have a good night. We are going to uh, call it a night, I believe. And I'm thinking about adding a uh, Hawaii station up here onto the 
uh, seismograph stations here um, right after the update video I gotta add the Hawaii uh, network onto the map here there's right now it's just showing standard um, default settings here on this program I use of only two stations but once I add the uh, the network it's cluttered with it's cluttered here with uh, all sorts of seismograph stations that I have access to and uh, can monitor so uh, I will be doing that here right after the update 2.6 let's go check that out real quick what's going on out there on the East Coast hold on one second that just popped up there on the map North Carolina right right at the border we've been seeing a little bit of activity out there um, well we can go back the last 30 days and see um, some of the activity I was referring to we got to go right underneath that red dot and see a couple quakes there this one's a little bit bigger 2.6 compared to a couple of the micro quakes and whatnot these are negative quakes for some reason but uh, that's yeah, a little bit little bit bigger out there and potentially well let's see what do we got out there as far as the towns go Sparta looks sparsely populated of course the folks here that live on uh, what is this Sparks Ridge Lane and Ralph Trail I'm sure they may have possibly felt it like I say it just popped up the depth of this earthquake very shallow uh, if that is indeed the case they will definitely uh, definitely feel that let's see what we got out there from the folks looks like uh, well yeah quite a few people already keen in Sparta like I mentioned there six responses so far uh, looks like folks up to about 26 kilometers away may have felt it too in uh, Crumpler is that Crumpler never heard of that Crumpler North Carolina okay uh, and that's at about 26 kilometers from the epicenter all right, folks, we are out of here. Stay safe. Have a good Saturday night. It's crazy out there. A lot of, a lot of people doing some crazy stuff. So uh, be safe out there. Have a good night. We'll chat you guys a little bit later.